Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to celebrate the end of an icon. But seriously, Natasha, what did you do, okay? I just swatched the golden palette and I have questions because the gold palette from Natasha Denona is an icon and I feel like she did her dirty. I haven't tried it on my eyes yet, but I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Karen Harris. I like to film tan girl friendly makeup videos here on YouTube. I am doing probably what every other YouTuber that ordered this palette and got it in the mail today is doing right now. Filming their first impressions reviews on the new collection from Natasha Denona. Straight off the bat, thank you for taking the time to watch my video. I really, really appreciate you. Give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below. It really helps me out in the algorithm. And without further blabbering, let's get into it. So I have thoughts. I feel like you guys know me. You know I am not the biggest neutral gal, but I will say I do like to throw on neutral eyeshadows every once in a while, especially if I'm wearing something more over the top or colorful and I want my outfit to stand out, I do turn to neutrals. Also, let's be real, with my skin tone, I can slay a golden yellow. We know this. I was wearing the super fiery eye look the other day and you guys loved it, so... I'm just gonna hype myself up. I know I can rock these tones. And I will say, I was just posting my swatches on my stories and I had a thought because a lot of the times when people know that I'm a creator and I focus on beauty content, they ask me like, oh, what eyeshadow palette at Sephora do you recommend? And the lady that does my brows, shout out to her if she watches this video, she will ask me like, what palette should I get from Sephora? for my skin tone, for our skin tone, and I always think like, I guess you could probably do ABH because I feel like ABH has good quality eyeshadows. I don't feel like there's a lot of brands at Sephora that have good quality eyeshadows that aren't like super overpriced like Pat McGrath. So I'm happy that Natasha did this wonderful boring palette that people are now gonna see on display and they're just gonna be enticed to buy it. I love all of that for us. But I feel like I've drawn on and on, so let's go ahead and look at some quick close-ups, some swatches, talk about the collection, and then we're going to put it on my eyes. Okay, so this collection is the Golden Collection. It consists of three pieces. We have the Golden Eyeshadow Palette, which retails for $69. So on the Natasha Denona website, it says, With overwhelming requests to bring back one of her most loved palettes, Natasha unveiled the Golden Eyeshadow Palette, a new and elevated 15 shade version of her previous original gold palette, featuring new and existing shades in her iconic formula. This palette is designed to create mesmerizing golden hue looks, 18.9 grams or 0.6 ounces, and it says that Natasha's pro-level user-friendly eyeshadow formulas are known for their seamless blendability, delivering vibrant, ultra-pigmented results. This midi-sized palette showcases seven mattes in Natasha's famous cream and pressed powder finishes, five high-shine golden and vivid antique brass metallics, a nude sparkling foil champagne, a chroma crystal topper with a diamond-like finish, and a golden hue wet effect formula. So I want to read you guys the shade descriptions while I'm showing you swatches of the eyeshadows. So we have Milko, Matte Cream Powder Off-White, Nubia, Sparkling Foiled Gold Nude Champagne, Panna, Matte Cream Powder Beige, Aria, Matte Medium Light Dusty Sand, Fizzy, Sparkling Wet Effect Golden Nude, Varis, Metallic Medium Antique Brass, Aura, Metallic Golden Ivory, Teak, Matte Medium Dusty Caramel, Kava, Sparkling Champagne Gold, Sandstone, Matte Medium Ochre, Arum, Metallic Muted Gold, Log, Matte Dark Brown, Oro, Metallic Warm Gold, Flesh, Matte Light Warm Nude, Alchemist, Metallic Brass. So those are all the shade descriptions featuring the same beloved golden hued shades and new perfectly complementing essential earthy browns replacing the original teals. Why? <laughs> Why? Why do we need to replace the teals? Okay, so one thing I will say about Natasha is 
She definitely gives us all the content. There's so many tutorials on her YouTube channel, so if you're not following it, highly recommend because she posts a lot of content. Maybe it's just because I don't follow a lot of other brand YouTube channels, but I will give her props for that. Next we have the Golden Highlighter Trio, $55. Natasha's Golden Highlighter Trio Multi-Use Hybrid Cheek Glow features three captivating universal shades that can be used on the cheeks, lips, and eyes. Debuting a new and innovative hydrating hybrid formula and rich with active ingredients, this unique gummy gel powder delivers an extremely high foiled finish. I definitely felt that even when I swatched these, so I'm super duper excited to try it out. The shades are Pearl, which is a soft golden champagne. I would say this would be perfect for a light skin tone. We have Sun Glow, which is a nude gold, which is probably the one I'm going to use on my face and that will be perfect for medium tan complexions and then bronze is a beautiful golden bronze it's quite a bit dark so i think it should work on quite a few skin tones so i do love that she gave us three shades i do wish she had just done them individually but natasha denona did just launch four highlighters i think the high high gen ones right i can't remember what they're called but i did buy one of those and this formula in the palette does feel similar to those, so that's lovely. And last piece of the collection, which honestly kind of swatched like I was trying to swatch Elmer's. It was very sticky looking when I was applying it on the back of my hand, so I'm nervous. I'm definitely going to put it on my lips when I start filming the look. So this is the Golden Glimmer Gloss, $29. Natasha introduces the Golden Glimmer Gloss, an innovative clear oil gloss formula that illuminates the lips with incandescent golden sparkles while delivering the benefit of a hydrating oil. This hybrid shimmering lip plumper subtly tingles to give the lips visible volume and a high shine mirror finish, leaving them with a noticeable plump effect. So I will say I didn't feel like it had an obnoxious like minty smell or anything. So I will give it a chance because of that because I just hate how like lip plumpers tingle like in a minty way. I guess this says it's going to tingle so we'll see. But now you've seen swatches, heard all of the information I could find on the Natasha Denona website about this collection. So let's go ahead and put it to a real test which is on my face, and I want to know if this is going to be my next palette that I'm going to recommend to all the tan girls out there that want to shop at Sephora, but they don't want to buy a crazy colorful palette, which I totally understand. Listen, there's a place for everything out there, so I am a big supporter of that. Okay, so I just lined my lips with the Char Lip Liner from Unearthly Cosmetics. I'll definitely link this down below for you guys. It's the moment of truth. I want to wear this lip oil plumper hybrid change my life situation. Also, yes, I know I'm going to wreck the doe foot, but we're doing it for science. So here we go. It honestly has the fragrance of a coconut. It's very glossy looking, so I love that. It's very high shine. I'm waiting to see if it's going to start tingling or get like super stingy and like I'm going to rip my lips off my face. Barely tingling right now, so we'll see if it amps up at all. I feel like this is just like the basic B palette of all basic B palettes, but those are the palettes that are also somewhat iconic with brands. Like look at what the Naked series did for Urban Decay. I feel like every person that was wearing makeup when the original Urban Decay Naked Palette came out went out and bought it. So maybe this will be the Urban Decay Naked Palette of this new generation of beauty enthusiasts. You know, only time will tell, but I'm very excited to play with this. I do think this is boring as hell, but like I said in the start of this video, I know these shades look amazing on me. Yes, I'm going to say that because why not? Life is too short to not hype yourself up, okay? Okay, you guys, quick lip update. They're definitely starting to tingle. I was like thinking I got away with it, but nope, nope. They're definitely they're definitely heating up. Do you feel like they're looking plumper? 
<laughs> oh my god, I can never tell. I mean, I feel like lip plumper is just a way to like feel a little bit of pain. Um, but yeah, no, they're they're definitely they're definitely tickling. Okay, so I'm gonna start. I'm just gonna do my look that I do all the time. I'm gonna go into the shade log because we need that in the outer corner. Who are these lips? Oh, I can't wait to hear Angie's reaction because I know she does not like stingy lip plumpers. So I think that'll be a good litmus test for us to see. Like, am I being over the top about it? Because I don't test out a lot of lip plumpers. I feel like I, feel like I should warn you guys. <laughs> that uh my lips feel like they're definitely getting stung by a few bees not like crazy intense I, I do have a pretty high pain tolerance so take it with a grain of salt but yeah I'm definitely gonna have to see other people's reactions to this lip glimmering gloss oil hybrid situation this is a pretty color. I like it. It's blending nicely. I just love tucking a nice dark shade into the honor corner. You guys know this about me. This is not new information. And I just like to blend because that's me. I love a good blending situation. Okay, so I think I'm going to use the shade Leek, which is the middle shade right here. I will say... Can I tell you guys a little secret? When I started just watching this palette, I was like, all these freaking eyeshadows look the same. I can't tell which one I just swatched. Like, I literally had to sit there and do like mental gymnastics for a second to make sure I like picked up in the right spot because there's not a lot of differences in the shot. Like this could have just been like a like a five pan palette if we really I mean she does kind of have this. Like she has the mini nude you know so but the packaging's pretty the packaging's pretty so maybe we want to buy it because of that and that's freaking okay I'm not gonna judge you I think the packaging is pretty I bought the palette somebody also told me that this was kind of annoying that there's kind of like three like fleshy tone shades which I get but like some people really like to do a shade like that kind of like all over the lid or in the inner corner or you know people that still probably highlight their brow bone probably want shades like that so you know it's hard to make everybody happy when you're making palettes like this so I get it but I love reading your guys's comments on my community tab post because it gives me like things to think about as I wait for products to arrive and then I can kind of like incorporate your thoughts into my reviews because I think it like helps answer questions for you guys. So I definitely felt like a lot of people in my community tab posts are so, so excited for this launch. So I get it. And then some of you are like, oh my God, that is so boring. And I totally get it. So it's time to do my lid shade and I'm so bummed because we do not have a shade as iconic as the shade Lime Chrome in the original palette. This is such a beautiful like duochrome, like green, champagne-y color. It's, it's just an icon. It's just an icon. I'm so bummed that it's gone. This one's really pretty too. It's called Sparks. Just like a super pretty white shade. Actually, this one, is it the same as Aura? Now I'm going to sit here and start like comparing. Yeah, those two are pretty similar. Anyway, Lime Chrome, iconic. I need to send a letter to somebody at Natasha Denona being like, how dare you? How dare you say that this palette's inspired by the original Gold palette and you didn't at least have the audacity to throw in one duochrome shade, but who am I but a lowly YouTuber? So anyways, let's go ahead and play with a shimmer shade. I think I'm gonna go with Oro just because like those yellow tones just I just know they look great. So I'm grabbing a flat brush. I love these brushes 
Let me know in the comments if you know what brush set this is from, what brand this brush is from. It's on the brush, by the way, but maybe, maybe some of you would just know by seeing the candy cane handles. So like, you know, nice shimmer, pretty opaque. I of course always spray my shimmers. And I'm just gonna put that all over my eyelid. That is so pretty. Oh, that's so pretty. And that was so easy to do. So if that helps anyone, that's cool. Okay, I feel like this look needs a brown eyeliner, so I'm gonna use my Pacifica eyeliner. Okay, I'm gonna grab this Sonia G brush and I'm gonna go into the shade Leek. And I'm just gonna run that on the lower lash line. Nice and simple. Okay, and I'm gonna put a little bit of log on the very edge here and kind of blend upwards because I like to tie in my outer corner to my waterline. And of course, to just complete the whole basicness of this look, I'm going to take the shade Aura, which is a really pretty, like, I don't know, it's like a creamy champagne-y color, and I'm just going to plop that right on the inner corner and just kind of drag it into the waterline a little bit too. That is such a pretty shade. Okay, I think this look needs a wing liner, so I'm going to do that off camera and maybe I'll even throw on some lashes but first we need to go ahead and try out the highlighter palette so I'm gonna go in with this shade I already have blush and bronzer on so let's go ahead and highlight okay so since this felt like a really dense creamy highlighter I'm gonna use a bit more of a dense highlighter brush and I just really want to press that in and blend it so that it really soaks in to my skin and doesn't just sit on top so there it is it looks a very like part of my skin kind of like gentle even so it's beautiful though it's not like sparkly it's like a sheen so there's the highlighter here's the side without highlighter so hopefully you guys can see a difference I don't want to use the lighter shade because I know that's going to be a little too light on me, but I could probably use the deeper shade, but I kind of want to keep it simple, so that is my look. So I'm going to go ahead and zhuzh it up, do something with this hair, maybe throw on some earrings, and I'll be right back to show you guys the finished look. Okay, friends, so here is the finished look. What do we think? I did add a wing liner, and I did reapply the gloss because I had to help with bath time. So here we are. Also, my shirt was covered in water. So I switched shirts, but yeah, this is the finished look. Let me tell you really quick what else is on my face today before we talk about what I think of this new collection from Natasha Denona. Okay, so I did decide to use some older products in my collection. So I have the Beauty Bakery Foundation. I think they went out of business. So I should probably declutter this, but I really like this foundation. So thought I would wear it. And then I have the Essence Concealer. This is the Keep Me Covered Concealer. Super affordable, really nice concealer at the drugstore. NARS, this is the Laguna 03 Cream Bronzer. Haven't used this in eons, but I literally just looked down at my bronzer drawer and I was like, ooh, I should use that bronzer, so I did. And then I also used this blush today. This is the shade Starburst from the new Lawless Cream Blushes. Of course, I've been loving the one size powder in the shade Ultra Peach, and then I did use the Natasha Denona Hyper Natural Face Palette. I used a little bit of those two bronzer shades because I've been really into topping my bronzer with a powder, so I did grab that as well. So that's everything on my face today. I'll try and link everything down below for you guys as well. So I feel like if I wanted to be super helpful, I'd probably swatch the new midi golden palette against the gold palette 
which is the OG but I don't really have that kind of time. I figured I would just like hold them up next to each other and I know there are some like repeat shades in the new palette but I feel like the teals, as few as there are, there's only like two teal shades, I feel like this palette just had something that was a little bit more interesting. The price point was kind of ridiculous but it's still a fun palette. I mean I've kept it all these years. I don't feel like Golden lives up to it, but I will let everybody else decide in the comments. I want to hear you guys weigh in because this is just my first time trying it, so I have no full thoughts on it, but my opinion is it's pretty ordinary. I'm going to show you some other palettes that are similar to this color story in my collection. You guys might have these palettes, so if you've been contemplating forking out $69 on the golden palette, maybe this will help you talk yourself out of the purchase. So the first palette I thought of was definitely the Sigma Ambiance mm. palette. I think this palette is gorgeous. You guys know I'm a big fan of Sigma. And they actually launched a highlighter palette with this collection that has six shades. So maybe you want to check that out instead because mm. the Sigma highlighter formula is absolutely bomb. I will say just on the Sigma formula though, this formula is definitely more mainstream. It's pigmented, it's beautiful, but I will say Natasha does have a formula that is different. I don't want to say better, but it's just more my preference if I had to pick between the two because I love her cream to powder shadows. I know they're not for everyone, but I do like that. This palette, I only felt like this first one was a cream to powder. I And maybe the shade Pana, actually, or Pana. Um, so it's two lighter shades. But, yeah, I just, I don't know. If I had to, like, rank them, I would say I prefer the Natasha Denona formula. But I don't hate the Sigma one either. I think the Sigma one is also very easy to use. And this palette is gorgeous, so... You have options. We also have to talk about the Huda Beauty Empowered palette. Now, I do like the Empowered palette because it does have more deepening up shades. And I think this one is also a beautiful option for South Asian women. Because like I said, I get asked a lot what shades or what palette I suggest for my complexion. And if you're in the neutrals, I feel like these golden tones just look really good with our skin tone. So just want to show you Empowered like the color story of this one just a little bit extra because it has more deepening up options and that's really good when you're dealing with a darker complexion and then the last palette i just wanted to show you is one that literally just arrived this is the precious metals palette from color pop of course a fraction of the price of the natasha denona one and i was just so curious about this palette because it looked like the really good ColourPop formula that I love so I did grab it when they were doing like free shipping or maybe they had like a discount or something so I did grab it so we'll see I haven't tried this yet but I wanted to give you guys that option of course there's like tons of other palettes out there that have these golden tones so so if you are on a low buy or no buy I feel like this is an easy skip because it's not the most unique palette out there Sometimes I have a harder time telling you guys to skip palettes like Ensley Rain or when Bella Butte Bar does a really interesting color story or Nomad does something or Adept, like all of my favorite indie brands, Unearthly. Like I would definitely say Unearthly's new high temp palette, Chef's Kiss. Like I was blown away by that palette. This one's just okay. Like it's fine. It's nice. It's gonna be reliable it's gonna get the job done but I don't think that you maybe need it necessarily so hopefully that kind of helped you out hopefully the comparisons helped you out I will say if you're trying to manage like what to get if you don't want to splurge on the whole collection you can definitely skip this lip gloss glimmering golden gloss I feel like it's not that special it's definitely more tingly so if you don't want a plumping lip gloss definitely skip this if you don't like one that's like very tingly, you also are probably just dodging a bullet by not getting this one. So I would say this is an easy skip. 
The highlighter palette is super beautiful. The formula is gorgeous, very creamy. My kind of highlighter formula, but again, I don't feel like the shades are that unique, so you could probably pass on this too. <laughs> I mean, it's nice. It's very high quality. It's beautiful. I mean, look at this highlight. It's very lit from within, definitely on trend. Packaging, super gorgeous, but I feel like I'm being the worst content creator influencer right now because I'm like, you don't need it. You don't you don't need it. It's very basic. You probably have this 10 times over. I don't know. That's how I feel. So I'm going to go with it. This is just a first impression. So keep an eye out for my June ranking video because I'll definitely come back with my thoughts on this palette. I will say if you do want to support and for some reason you're going to shop on the Natasha Denona website or any of the other retailers that are carrying this collection, I will put some links down below. It really helps me out if you shop through my links. For some weird reason, the affiliate codes that everybody has with Natasha Denona, they're only a one-time use code. So I paid a full price for this freaking collection <laughs> because it like checked out so fast for me that I couldn't even like enter a code. Like I didn't have a spot to put it in while I was going through the checkout process. So I was really bummed about that because I want to use somebody's code even though sometimes I use mine. I can't because I've already used it. So just keep that in mind. Find codes, I guess, but I wish they would change that because it seems so silly because if I, you know, talked about this palette and you liked the content, you can't use my code if you've already used it. So just a little FYI, but you can still shop through my affiliate link. It does help me out and I guess I'll get credit for it that way, but Either which way, I know that was like super boring and nobody cares, but I just wanted to mention in case nobody said it to you already and you haven't figured it out, you can only use an influencer code once unless you create multiple accounts, which I'm not going to do that just to use my own code. That's so silly. So anyways, that is all the tea. That's all I've got. I feel like I could have swatched more, but I'm sure there's going to be a ton of videos. So I hope you guys have a good day. I'm going to go and relax, have some dinner, and I will see you in another video very, very soon. Bye, friends.